This here is a Multi Plus 2 by Victron. We've been hearing some horror stories of customers having trouble wiring up the AC output and input of this inverter. These use a spring terminal and you need to know how to connect these in order to make a solid connection. This has caused some serious issues with these inverters, including some customers that have actually melted these terminals from having a bad connection. So today we're going to show you the best way to make connections to this and how to make it easy for your installation. Now while it's not my preference, most customers are wiring this up with Romex. This is a 6.4 Romex that has three number six conductors for the two hots, neutral, and a number 10 ground. This is commonly used in a lot of RVs to run from the shore power input to the main panel. So in order to get this into the inverter, uh, most customers will either cut this or they'll replace it. But at the end of the day, the key you need to keep in mind is that we need 8 inches approximately, it's about 8 to 10 inches, but I recommend 8 inches of this jacketing inside the inverter. So I made a mark here with my thumb. I'm going to use a razor knife and cut back this insulation very carefully, making sure not to nick the wires inside. Now these inverters have these little rubberized grommets that allow you to cut them in steps in order to get a good seal around the wire so that dust and whatnot doesn't get in there. I've pulled one of them out, they pop out pretty easily, and I'm going to show you how to cut these very easily in order to make them the right size for the wire. So I highly recommend placing them on the edge of the table and then using a very sharp knife you can cut it. Now you want to cut it ever so slightly smaller than the wire you're using because this in here will flex in order to create the seal up against the wire. And you can see it's mostly good. There's a little bit right in here that's not perfect, but this will be good enough for our intents and purposes. Next, I'll slide it over the wire like this. And in reality, I went a little bit big on this opening, but it'll be fine for today's example. Just make sure you don't go too big on this to allow any dust or moisture or anything like that to come through. So now before inserting this into the inverter, I like to straighten out all the wires just to make it easy. They're twisted within here, and that's okay if they're a little twisted. I just prefer to straighten them to make my life easier. And to strip the end of these wires, I like to use my Klein Tools wire stripper. I've had this one for years, and my favorite part about it is it goes all the way up to 6 gauge. Now on these wires, we want to strip 3 quarters of an inch of insulation. And there's a red sticker inside the inverter that says exactly this. So just like that, now our wire is stripped, and that's the proper length for going in the terminal of the inverter. And so you can see that is approximately three quarter of an inch. That's what we want to strip on all three of these insulated wires. Inside of this inverter, there are these nylon clamps here. Now I've already backed off the screws here, but you want to be very certain that you take advantage of these. So that way you don't run the risk of the wires being pulled out in any way. So the wires would just feed in through there. And then I like to bend them up as you can see here. And then once the wires are in, we can shove this grommet back into the hole like that. And the most important thing to take note of is you need to be certain that the insulation is what's under the clamp here, not the actual wires. So you can see I have it installed about a half inch past those clamps. And from here, we can get the clamp snug down, at least finger tight. The thing to keep in mind, there are two holes on these terminals. There's a small one on top to release the spring inside and the big hole on the bottom, and that's for your wire to go into. So I'm gonna start with this one here on the left that's for the neutral wire. I'm using a Milwaukee screwdriver here. This is a 1 8 inch wide tip. It's a flat tip, as you can see there. And I'm gonna take this and put it at about a 20 to 30 degree angle so it's not perfectly flat and then I'm going to tap on the back of it with my hand until it's firmly seated in the hole and that just released the spring okay so now on this wire here I'm going to make a 90 degree bend in it here close toward the end of the wire and then in the middle I'm going to put my finger like this and kind of hook it over to make a return bend and now that allows me the flexibility to push the wire into the hole. And once the wire is fully seated in the bottom of the hole, you then pull out the screwdriver and then do a tug test. Pull on this as hard as you can and it should not come out of that hole. 
So from there, we can kind of clean this up, bend it a little bit more, and then proceed to our next wire, which is L2. Again, bending 90 degrees at the end, return bend in the middle. Got it lined up at the hole now. I can go ahead and put my screwdriver in to release the spring. Now the wire can shove in all the way. And then we pull the screwdriver out, do a tug test, and now that wire is set. Next is the earth. And now that L1 is in, it passes the tug test. We've got enough slack in case we ever had to put some fresh ends on here. And now we're good to go. We would just repeat the same process for AC out, and then we'd be set. Now I've seen before where customers don't put any extra wire in here. That's bad practice. What they do is they try to cut them all to the perfect length and then just shove them straight into the hole. So there's only all of about three inches of wire inside of the inverter. I definitely don't recommend that because let's say you come back in a couple years and you check these connections and something's not right, you need to redo it. With this style, we can always pull the wires out, bend them straight again, strip some new insulation off the end and have a fresh connection that's ready to last for years. Um, if you went straight in, it would probably require uh, pulling the wire out completely and replacing some of it. You know, if it's uh, too short, you may have to replace the whole section. So always give yourself some extra slack to work with. It sure makes makes it easier being able to like bend these and whatnot to get them in there. If it was just straight in, you know, it would be a problem. The other thing I don't recommend is some guys will use their pliers. They'll grab onto the wire to push it in. That's a good way to nick the insulation. I wouldn't do that unless you absolutely have to, but I can't think of very many cases where that would be necessary. So hope this helps you guys with wiring up your Multi Plus 2. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. And always, we're here to help. Thanks for choosing Current Connected. See you later.